Welcome back. And thanks for joining us here at Live Now from Fox. I'm your host, Karel Lahada. We have got you covered with everything you need to know as the Democratic National Convention continues this week in Chicago. Let's listen in to some more speakers from night one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you. Four years ago, Americans were experiencing high anxieties and great uncertainties. A daily virus ranged, schools closed, businesses shuttered. Donald Trump mismanaged the crisis from day one, looking out for himself instead of the country. The American people responded to the crisis in leadership by electing new leaders. Thanks to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, we reopened our schools, brought back our businesses, and restored our faith in the American can-do spirit. Thanks to Joe and Kamala, we reduced the price of prescription drugs, repaired roads and bridges, and replaced lead pipes. Thanks to Joe and Kamala, we are honoring our heroes in uniform and expanded benefits to over a million veterans. Thanks to Joe and Kamala, Make It in America is no longer just a slogan, but a movement that is bringing millions of manufacturing jobs back to America. For President Biden's lifetime of achievement, in service of his country, we owe him a great debt of gratitude. And we're all grateful for one of the best decisions he made, selecting Kamala Harris as his vice president and endorsing her to succeed him. I often say that we are but the sum of our experiences. In the introduction of my memoir, I wrote, all my experiences have not been pleasant, but I consider all of them to be blessings. So has been the case with Kamala. Her experiences have prepared her for this moment. Kamala Harris is a true battle-tested leader, a district attorney, attorney general, senator, and vice president who gets things done. While Donald Trump has been bragging about how he overturned Roe, Kamala has been fiercely advocating for the restitution of reproduction freedoms. While Trump has been looking out for himself and his billionaire buddies, Kamala has been fighting to lower costs for all Americans. And while Trump falsely pleads ignorance of Project 2025, which in my opinion is Jim Crow 2.0, Kamala has been offering the American people enlightened proposals and visionary leadership. Having grown up in a parsonage, I often look to the good book for understanding and guidance. As 2 Corinthians informs, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, 
but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Our great democracy has been tested, and so has the basic goodness of the American people. But our resolve to remain a great country with freedom and justice for all will not falter. We will continue our march toward a more perfect union, united in our common purpose and emboldened by our resolve to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walz as the next president and vice president of these United States of America. Thank you and Godspeed. justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. This is the story of Donald Trump. His entire life, Trump has believed he's above the law, that no one would ever dare hold him accountable. He lies. He rips off workers. He sexually abuses women. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. He cheats in business. He cheated on his wife with a porn star and paid her off so the American people wouldn't find out during an election. But in the criminal justice system, ordinary Americans have had the courage to find him accountable time and time again. Guilty. 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 Donald Trump guilty on all 34 felony counts. For the first time in history, we have a convicted felon running for president. And to take on this case, we need a president who has spent her life prosecuting perpetrators like Donald Trump. He tried overturning Georgia's free and fair election. I just want to find 11,780 votes. He's tried to escape any responsibility for instigating the January 6th attack on our Capitol. We're going to walk down to the Capitol, and I'll be there with you. And if elected... Trump has promised to overturn laws that would keep him accountable and exact retribution on anyone he considers an enemy. Even warning of a bloodbath if he doesn't get his way. So we the people have a chance to render our own verdict on Donald Trump. We are the jury he most fears. When we vote this November, we vote for justice, accountability, and the rule of law that keeps America free. Please welcome Maryland Representative Jamie Raskin. Democracy Convention. Welcome to the Freedom Convention. And thank you for the beautiful weather, Chicago. It's, uh, it's been a little rough on Capitol Hill where it's not just the heat, it's the stupidity. Mm. Now, we meet in this great city tonight where Abraham Lincoln was nominated in 1860 to save the Union from fanatical insurrectionists, and where Franklin D. Roosevelt was renominated by Democrats in 1940 to defeat fascist dictators. Now, we fight in our time to defend our freedom and our democracy against the banana Republicans who have converted Lincoln's party into a dangerous 
cult of personality. You know, I'll never forget the pounding on the doors of the House chamber on January 6th, or the screams to follow. Hundreds of our police officers taunted and attacked, 140 of them wounded by extremists wielding baseball bats, steel pipes, even American flags. Five people died that day, and four more of our officers took their own lives in the days and weeks to come. All of this after Trump was defeated by more than seven million votes by the great Joe Biden. It was after 80 judges rejected every ridiculous claim raised by this sore loser who does not know how to take no for an answer from American voters, American courts, or American women. Remember what the mob chanted as they stormed the Capitol and injured our officers? Hang Mike Pence. Someone should have told Donald Trump that the president's job under Article 2 of the Constitution Someone should have told Donald Trump that the president's job under Article 2 of the Constitution is to take care that the laws are faithfully executed not that the vice president is executed Pence has now joined more than two dozen officials from Donald Trump's own administration in denouncing him, an historical record. And Pence is the first vice president in more than two centuries not to support the president he served with in a general election. And by the way, J.D. Vance, do you understand why there was a sudden job opening for running mate on the GOP ticket? They, they tried to kill your predecessor. They tried to kill him because he would not follow Trump's plan to destroy and nullify the votes of millions of Americans. Your votes, Pennsylvania. Your votes, Michigan. Your votes, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona. Are we going to go back to the days of election suppression and violent insurrection? One week after that beautiful day, as Trump calls it, the Republicans, 10 Republicans, joined all of the Democrats to impeach Trump for the worst high crime and misdemeanor ever committed by a president, inciting insurrection against our own Constitution. Make no mistake, a man who uses fraud, 